when I showed you my last video that had to do with the hotel and all the colors changing from colorful colors to very muted dull colors of all gray shades from pale gray to very dark gray to black to a few things are like the doors are white the carpet is dark gray as I showed you and the pattern on the floor is all choppy and I was told by one of my viewers that was a chevron pattern it's kind of like a herringbone pattern but with a variation to the pattern but I had no idea that was going to lead to what I just was looking up today and I happened to be looking at some very important information that reveals who actually set up this situation in Afghanistan and when I was looking up about the presidential portrait that showed the garden with B.O. in the garden um, you know it had that serpent head behind him supposed to be in the Garden of Eden but I had not really looked at his wife's presidential portrait um, the gown that she is wearing and that's M.O. and she had a gown that was very much with the black, white, gray triangle stripe pattern and some of the stripes had certain colors in it so I'm going to go over that with you to show you what God revealed to me about that portrait of her. We've already seen the snake in the background with the head you know like looking right at you right over his back in the back of his head but today I noticed the gown that she's wearing has similar patterns to what I saw in my pictures and everything so let me show you the gown the portrait and let me show you again the things in the hotel that were similar I just want you guys to see this dress the colors that are in it the lack of color the gray and black and white what I talked about in my video about gray and here we have the triangle in black with the gray triangles upside down on it half of a gray circle with white and black and the upper part is black looks like with a white circle and then you got this gray black and white stripes and I'm going to talk about what this means you've got red stripes pink stripes yellow stripes and gray and black if you don't know what this is this is the presidential portrait of Michelle O. Remember the painting in my room that has this black triangle pattern on it? Black and white triangles. I showed you this spiral, finding out that it's a symbol that goes back to the creator of Marxism. And I showed you this black, white, and gray variants painting. And I showed the dark hall with the dark carpet with the lighter gray, the white, and the dark gray. Now I showed you at the bottom of the gown you had the red stripes with white, then you had the pink stripes with white, yellow with white stripes, and the last one was gray and black, just like the decor in the hotel here. Let me go over these colors with you now. So we already know the whole story of what I told you about Dr. Zhivago and how everything in the socialist communist 
thing they want to take away everybody's individuality so they make everything gray people were wearing gray clothing shades of gray variegated gray to black and white and not individualistic color nothing of like the old royal colors like I told you like I showed you with the Toliat Shani the crimson worm that makes the beautiful colors in array of all the rainbow colors really from a pale apricot color clear to purple and blue and scarlet in different shades and it's just the opposite of that and those are the colors that God commanded for the consecration so now we have this group of people that are basically anti-Jesus anti-God and they have a socialist, communist, Marxist agenda. And let me just go over the colors that were in the gown that she's wearing in that painting. Incredibly, she has the yellow and white stripes down at the base of the dress. And if you look at the political meaning of yellow, it's the color most strongly associated with liberalism and right liberalism. So it wasn't a mistake that she was wearing those colors, not only of the socialist, communist, gray and black, but also the yellow of liberalism. So what's behind the pink color in her dress? The pink and white stripes. Pink actually emerged as 2020's color of political protest. They say that pink has reframed the color of activism. So you've got liberalism in her gown, activism, and socialism, communism, the colors of gray and black. So we know that red is associated with communism in a lot of aspects. But politically, red is often associated with the left, especially socialism and communism. The oldest symbol of socialism and by extension communism is the red flag, which dates back to the French Revolution in the 18th century and the revolutions of 1848. So the gown is not only depicting the colors of socialism and communism and activism, liberalism and Marxism. It's telling you that they're changing your world and is, isn't that what um, President O said that change has come to America? But if we look at the color black, black is primarily associated with anarchism anarchist symbolism. Black can be seen as a lack of color. Anarchism is a lack of a state. It is used in contrast of national flags to instead represent universal anarchism. Anarchism or anarchy is a society being freely constituted without authorities or a governing body it may also refer to a society or group of people that entirely rejects a set of hierarchy. Is anarchism left or right? As an anti-capitalist and libertarian socialist philosophy, anarchism is placed on the far left of the political spectrum, and much of its economics and legal philosophy reflect anti-authoritarian interpretation of left-wing politics such as communism, collectivism, syndicalism, mutualism, participatory economics. Anarchism calls for the abolition of the state which it holds to be undesirable, unnecessary, and harmful. And what about the white color that was prevalent on the gown? Democratic women in Congress made a bold statement at President Trump's address to Congress by wearing white, a symbol of the suffragist movement. 
So all of those colors were on Michelle Obama's presidential portrait gown. They actually call socialists the gray socialists. And this was her husband's presidential portrait. And behind him, people saw the serpent's face. You can see right behind him the face of the snake looking at you. These people are all working together and have worked together in the past. Remember this? During the Democratic Convention, he had an altar built that resembled the Pergamum Temple of Zeus, and here they're calling him God, saying that the Democrats built a temple for him. Remember that? If you recall, while he was president, the same situation happened where they provided all these weapons in Syria and the weapons were basically deliberately left behind and then a group with the initials IS, double, that they got a hold of all those weapons that Obama had sent there. Afghanistan's chilling new face of terror was that group. They would slaughter patients in their hospital beds, bomb girls' schools, and the group that's there now they saw is too liberal. Their goal was to re-establish the ancient military group, which I'm not going to say, but the first part of the word is Cali. So let's look at who's behind and who set up what's going on right now. And I'm going to show you a headline and I'm going to show you all the weapons that have just been left behind because the same thing was done again where they hastily removed the soldiers. They did this, Obama did this in Syria, hastily removed the soldiers, then all these weapons went to that group that was really evil and is it done deliberately to try to bring on the Cali group? I believe it is. The current administration is obviously working with the old administration and they're setting this whole thing up because look at the headline of this old article that I discovered and these are the people that set up what's going on in Afghanistan. The article actually says that they're the masterminds behind the takeover. Here's the person responsible for what's going on in Afghanistan. Meet the hardest of the hardcore. T5 released by Obama. Peace reps with US now masterminds. So he let these people out of the Gitmo and now they're the masterminds of the takeover. And isn't it interesting that they've been supplied tons, like they said, a military treasure trove of our weapons, including Black Hawk helicopters, machine guns, rifles, grenades. New York Post says they have machine guns. What this means is absolute tyranny by the current administration. I don't make political videos and I don't like talking about this subject but with that headline, he let these five leaders out that are the masterminds uh, going against our soldiers, threatening our people, threatening the people that helped the U.S., and providing 
tons of military weapons, some of them the top of the line. What does this tell you? The very thing that they accused the former president of is actually what they're doing. High crimes and misdemeanors. I'm just going to use the word tally and I'm not going to say the rest of the word just for the YouTube sake. The article that I just showed you, the headline, interesting the same people, the Tally Five, were involved in peace talks to end the conflict in Afghanistan with the U.S. in March of 2019. Held as prisoners of war by the U.S. for 13 years, the Tally Five were long-term Afghan detainees at Guantanamo Bay and formerly high-ranking members of the then Tally government who were released by Barack Obama in 2014 in exchange for United States Army Sergeant Bowie Bergdahl. They have been described as the hardest of the hardcore by the U.S. intelligence. They were deemed high risk to the United States and were recommended for continued detention. He was president. His vice president is now the current president. So they're obviously working this whole thing together behind the scenes. And interestingly, the same people, the Tally Five, were involved in peace talks to end the conflict in Afghanistan with the U.S. in March 2019. In 2019, as the American and Tally took up intense negotiations to try to end the conflict in Afghanistan, the Tally leadership made a point of including the former prisoners. Each day during the round of talks in Doha, Qatar, the five men sat face to face with the American diplomats and generals. The five former Guantanamo detainees had varying roles during the Tally government. One of them served as a governor and acting minister of interior. Another one was deputy minister of intelligence. Perhaps the most infamous figure in the group is, and his name is there, a frontline commander who was also chief of the Tally army. While accusations of human rights abuses by the others have generally remained vague, there seems to be considerably more evidence against the last person who, who I stated, who is accused of mass killings and scorched earth brutality. He released these people. And now his former VP is the head of this nation. According to a report by the New York Times, the men's Guantanamo files include several notations about uncooperative behavior and instigations, including throwing milk at guards and tearing up their mattresses in protest. The report also says that one of these men, according to his Guantanamo documents, was accused of narcotics trafficking and of closely associating with bin Laden's men in Al-Qaeda. He denied both accusations at his hearings. Now as Tally takes over Kabul and looks set to form a government, there are reports that these five men may have been the masterminds behind the annexation. The New York Post then writes, the Tally has seized U.S. weapons left in Afghanistan worth billions, possibly including 600,000 assault rifles some 2,000 armored vehicles and 40 aircraft, including Blackhawks, according to reports. The U.S. gave the Afghan military an estimated $28 billion in weaponry between 2002 and 2017, including seven brand new helicopters delivered to Kabul just a month ago. The war chest also included the supply of at least 600,000 infantry weapons including M16 assault rifles as well as 162,000 pieces of communication equipment and 16,000 night vision goggles. The war chest also included the supply of at least 
600,000 infantry weapons, including M16 assault rifles, as well as 162,000 pieces of communication equipment and 16,000 night vision goggles. In just two years, from 2017 to 2019, the U.S. gave 7,035 machine guns, 4,702 Humvees, 20,040 hand grenades, 2,520 bombs, and 1,394 grenade launchers, the Hill noted, citing a report last year from the Special Inspector General for Afghanistan Reconstruction. Everything that hasn't been destroyed is the tallies now. Admitting the weaponry seizures, National Security Advisor Jake Sullivan said Tuesday that the White House does not have a complete picture of what has fallen into the hands of the tally. But the current assessment is that it includes 2,000 armored vehicles, including U.S. Humvees, and up to 40 aircraft, potentially including UH-60 Blackhawks, Scout attack helicopters, and Scan Eagle military drones, another official told Reuters. Obviously, this is something that was done before by the O administration, and now his former VP as president is doing it again to set up this thing where they can create their ancient Kali of Islam. All of us already know about the ring that Obama wears. We already know what it says of who his loyalty is to. And just so many things. All of the blasphemous pictures of him as Shiva the Destroyer, pictured of him like mocking Jesus on the cross, picture of him riding into, you know, town on a donkey, um, all kinds of comments, people saying that he was their savior, and that one article saying that he was the Democrats' God, and statement that I showed you from the news. So there's so many things. There's also the picture, the staff picture in the White House where he was given a crown and a bow was sitting on the table with no arrow just out of the book of Revelation. He was given a crown and then of course he had the white horse thunder as he stood in the Pergamum copy temple in the Democratic Convention. He had thunder, the Denver Broncos horse above him. Of course that represented Muhammad's white horse that ascended to heaven. Um, the list goes on and on. There was also when Michelle came out in that one dress during the Democratic Convention, I think it was, her dress was black with a red center like a black widow spider. And to me that just signaled that, you know, a black widow like eats their I'm just showing you who's behind what's going on. I just wanted to show you that he let these people go and they were the worst of the worst and now they're in control. And think about how our military feels. And of course, his whole thing was to humiliate our military. Now I'm gonna share something with you that the Lord had revealed to me and I had made a video about it when Obama was still president. But I took it down just because I don't like talking about these political issues. But you know, you've had that constant bowing of the knee at the football games by a certain football player. It has to do with the Star Spangled Banner and the disrespect they want to show to it. And here's why. Because Francis Scott Key's new poem, When the Warrior Returns, was about the battle in Darna, Libya. In it was a phrase that he would use nine years later while watching the British attack Fort McHenry. And the song said this, And pale beamed the crescent, its splendor obscured by the light of the star-spangled flag of our nation, where each radiant star gleamed a meteor of war, and the turbaned heads bowed to its terrible glare. It has to do with 
the battle, the Barbary Wars, and Francis Scott Key pinning this about that they had to bow to our flag. In 1805, William Eaton, the former U.S. consul in Tunis, organized a land attack on Libya. He led nine Marines and 400 mercenaries on a two-month march of 500 miles from Egypt to Darna, then Libya's second largest city. U.S. Navy ships also bombarded the town where more than 800 people were killed. Marines then raised the 15-star U.S. flag over Darna's harbor fortress. A month later, Karamanli signed a new treaty and released the captain and crew of the Philadelphia in exchange for $60,000. The American victory in Libya, though not in the city of Tripoli proper, where the Barbary War was, was a historic event which established the U.S. new military prowess. It would be enshrined in the Marine Corps hymn written in celebration of William Eaton's victory of 1805. And those were the words that Francis Scott Key penned. And of course he penned the Star Spangled Banner. But he's talking about here that they won a victory over the turban heads that were bowed to the flag's terrible glare. I did a video about how Obama was disrespecting the Marines and even forcing one of the Marines to stand next to him and hold an umbrella over his head while it was sprinkling like a huge insult to the Marines. It was obvious on the soldier's face that he was humiliated and now what are they trying to do but humiliate all of our military that have been fighting for 20 years in this stupid war orchestrated by these people. So now you know why Obama never saluted the Marine when he got off the Air Force One or the presidential helicopter. They would salute to him but he wouldn't salute back. This is also why he wouldn't put his hand over his heart when they played the Star Spangled Banner. He stood there with his hands down in front of his groin for a reason. Everything I'm telling you is historical. It's the truth. It's not something I'm conjecturing or trying to piece together in my mind, trying to create a story. It's actual history. And the Lord caused me to see that this is what he's doing. So that's why they're kneeling during the national anthem that Francis Scott Key wrote because they're trying to disrespect and dishonor it because Islam was defeated and he wrote that thing about the Crescent. Here's a little video clip of that insult to the Marines. President Obama is now being taken to task for asking Marines to shield him during a news conference rain shower. He asked them to hold umbrellas over his head, over his head, over his head, over his head. Check out the picture of the Marines holding the umbrella for President Obama as it rained and the metaphor being, hey, they have him covered. Wouldn't it be nice if he had them covered the way they have him covered? Mm. He asked Marines for umbrellas. The President called in a couple of Marines for umbrella duty. Many people complain, saying Marines have been through too much training to have to hold an umbrella. This shot of the President emerged, President Obama hiding under an umbrella, hit the airwaves yesterday. Look at that Marine standing so erect. It was a symbolic moment today when the Marines came out and put the umbrella. They were protecting him. Maybe in this case, he should have been protecting them. Is there a more apt visual than this one? The disembodied arm of a U.S. Marine holding an umbrella over the head of our beleaguered commander-in-chief for him in the middle of a rainstorm. The Marines aren't supposed to do that because they can't properly salute. What is now being called Umbrella Gate. A blog hot air is demanding justice for the Marines. These guys aren't valets. I mean... I guess he could have held it himself, right? I don't know. Yes, bring forth the umbrellas unto me.
White House Thursday, two Marines held umbrellas for President Obama and the Turkish Prime Minister during a news conference in the rain. Look, it had the crescent flag behind him. Look at his face. Smug. Look at that. He's holding his elbow. It was a total insult to the Marines. They actually work on a volunteer basis because of the, the Islam war. Shifts. And if the president, you know the president's working in the Oval Office. Hundreds of years ago. Stand guard just outside on the north entrance into the Oval Office. If the Marines are not there, then And you of know course, the, the Turkish has, president uh, was there. The That's why the yeah. crescent flag was there. The commander in chief says it's okay, it's okay. Of course, to hold the umbrellas, yeah. A little bit about military No, history, they're though. ignorant. They don't know what she's yesterday. doing. Now, I want you to look at this. He says Obama forgets to salute, but he didn't forget. He wanted to insult him, and then he came back and he manhandled him. He's insulting the Marine here. Just watch this. Marine salutes, he doesn't salute. But watch what happens next. He comes back out, fiddles with the Marines outfit. In another incident, Statesboro Herald wrote, No flag pin, no hand over his heart. Is Obama exposed? Yes. This is why he approves of the football player kneeling during the national anthem. They talked about him early on saying the Democratic presidential hopeful is captured on film at a steak fry sponsored by Iowa Senator Tom Harkin. A closer look shows that Obama, unlike his Democratic colleagues, isn't putting his hand over his heart during the national anthem. Can you believe this? That's an outrage, it says. People need to wake up. He did it on purpose. He hates the national anthem because of the Marines fighting in North Africa and Tripoli in the Barbary Wars and Francis Scott Key pinning that verse about the crescent and the turbaned heads bowing to the flag. Now they're kneeling during the national anthem and not putting their heart because their heart is not for the Marines, the military, or the United States in general. They are deliberately, deliberately providing huge war chests of weapons to create a Cali over there. And who's behind it? But these two people that one was president and the other VP, and now the VP is president. This is the truth about who is setting it up. And here he is putting his hand in front of his groin during the national anthem early on. Everyone else has their hand over their heart. But look at what he's doing. Let's zoom up on it. He did the same thing at the Holocaust Memorial, the same hand pose right in front of his groin with his thumb sticking through. See? Every, every other American here has their hand over their heart by our flag. And now you know why. So what do you think? Hmm? So the Lord revealed that to me quite some time ago and I made a video about it, about the Barbary Wars and what happened and why he was disrespecting the Marine, even putting his hand under the Marine's elbow as if to hold it up. What an insult and the smug look on his face. You know, this was a secret that God has revealed about his true intentions. And he's provided the weapons for these people over there. And God bless our brave military, our Marines, 
our Army, our Navy, our Marines, our Air Force, all of them against this. So I want to just end this in prayer. Lord Jesus, Yeshua HaMashiach of Nazareth, I cry out to you to bring justice to those who have persecuted, insulted, and maligned our military soldiers. I pray you'll bring justice. I pray you'll bring this evil down and not elevate them. We pray you watch over all Americans and innocent Afghanistan people. And keep your people safe, Lord, over there. And I pray you'll bring down their intentions that evil cannot prosper. In Jesus' name. So now I have revealed to you that it's being set up and done on purpose by our very own leaders. It's very, very horrible. And one more thing, just to sum this up. We had this um, graphic quickly circulated on social media. It's kind of a blue-gray, his symbol with red and white stripes. And I told you what those colors meant. They're supplying Islam with massive amounts of weapons so there can be a new Cali. And I've just shown you who's behind it all. There you have it. Now you know what's going on and why it happened. And people are questioning, why isn't Biden doing something? Why blah, blah, blah. Because he's in on it. Well, that about sums up this report. I don't like to do political videos, but I had to continue when I saw that gown. So, it may be they don't allow this video to be up, but it's showing the truth. The words high crimes and misdemeanors fits here and the word treason. So I had to show you all exactly what the Lord revealed to me and why all this stuff was happening that made no sense. And people are saying, oh, they're taking the knee for another reason. That's not the reason. It's because Islam was insulted by the Francis Scott Key when he penned those words against Islam. Anyway, that's all I have to say for now. It's pretty disheartening and we need to pray. We need to pray for our country and our military and to pray that our military can get those weapons out of the hands of these thugs. Lord, we put every American and every American soldier in any of the branches of the military under your protection and a shield about them so they are protected from the enemies that are setting up evil against them. We ask you to expose these evildoers and to bring justice. We ask in your name, Jesus, Yeshua HaMashiach, amen. You may be shocked at what I just revealed and showed to you, but all things are going to be exposed, the Lord said. Let me finish with Psalm 37 from the JPS Tanakh, a psalm of King David. Fret not thyself because of evildoers, neither be thou envious against them that work unrighteousness, for they shall soon wither like the grass and fade as the green herb. Trust in the Lord and do good, Dwell in the land and cherish faithfulness. So shalt thou delight thyself in the Lord, and he shall give thee the petitions of thy heart. 
Commit thy way unto the Lord. Trust also in him, and he will bring it to pass. And he will make thy righteousness to go forth as the light, and thy right as the noonday. Resign thyself unto the Lord, and wait patiently for him. Fret not thyself because of him who prospereth in his way, because of the man who bringeth wicked devices to pass. Cease from anger and forsake wrath. Fret not thyself. It tendeth only to evil doing, for evil doers shall soon be cut off. But those that wait for the Lord shall inherit the land. And yet a little while, and the wicked is no more. Yea, that shall look well at his place, and he is not. But the humble shall inherit the land, and delight themselves in the abundance of peace. The wicked plotteth against the righteous, and gnasheth at him with his teeth. The Lord doth laugh at him, for he seeth that his day is coming. The wicked have drawn out the sword, and have bent their bow, to cast down the poor and needy, to slay such as are upright in the way. Their sword shall enter into their own heart, and their bows shall be broken. Better is a little that the righteous hath than the abundance of many wicked, for the arms of the wicked shall be broken, but the Lord upholdeth the righteous. The Lord knoweth the days of them that are wholehearted, and their inheritance shall be forever. They shall not be ashamed in the time of evil, and in the days of famine they shall be satisfied. For the wicked shall perish, and the enemies of the Lord shall be as the fat of lambs. They shall pass away in smoke. They shall pass away. The wicked borroweth and payeth not, but the righteous dealeth graciously and giveth. For such as are blessed of him shall inherit the land, and they that are cursed of him shall be cut off. It is of the Lord that a man's goings are established, and he delighted in his way. Though he fall, he shall not be utterly cast down, for the Lord upholdeth his hand. I have been young, and now am old. Yet have I not seen the righteous forsaken, nor his seed begging bread. All the day long he dealeth graciously, and lendeth, and his seed is blessed. Depart from evil, and do good, and dwell forevermore. For the Lord loveth justice, and forsaketh not his saints. They are preserved forever, but the seed of the wicked shall be cut off. The righteous shall inherit the land, and dwell therein forever. The mouth of the righteous uttereth wisdom, and his tongue speaketh justice. The law of his God is in his heart. None of his steps slide. The wicked watcheth the righteous, and seeketh to slay him. The Lord will not leave him in his hand, nor suffer him to be condemned when he is judged. Wait for the Lord, and keep his way, and he will exalt thee to inherit the land. When the wicked are cut off, thou shalt see it. I have seen the wicked in great power and spreading himself like a leafy tree in its native soil. But one passed by, and lo, he was not. Yea, I sought him, but he could not be found. Mark the man of integrity, and behold the upright, for there is a future for the man of peace, but transgressors shall be destroyed together. The future of the wicked shall be cut off. But the salvation, Yeshua, of the righteous is of the Lord. He is their stronghold in the time of trouble, and the Lord helpeth them and delivereth them. He delivereth them from the wicked and saveth them, because they have taken refuge in him. And we take our refuge in the Lord. And the Lord reveals all these things through the power of his Holy Spirit, because the wicked can't hide their evil deeds any longer. So with that, I'm signing off. Shalom.